Hello today everybody. Hello, hello. Happy, happy Monday. I hope that I get to see some folks jump on here today. I have a monumental word. Y'all know when it starts pouring out of my pores, I have to hit record. <laughs> and last night the Lord and I had a time, baby. And he took me to Ezekiel. So I wanted to jump online and talk about it today. Today right now today today um i hope everybody's doing well i just took the braids out best friend did her thing i tag her often so if anybody is in my area and you want to get your hair braided she is going to be the person to call just like my girl kiera um but yeah either way i hope everybody's doing fantastic um Y'all know me. I love to catch repetitiveness in the Bible. Um, so last night, I didn't even peep game that I was, you know, starting to catch for I am your Lord again uh, type of vibe going on, which, you know, is stated all throughout the Bible a lot, a lot, a lot, because that's what the Lord prefers to be called. Um, but when I continued to count it, I had to stop. I'm in like chapter 14. I had to stop because I think I'm at like 14 times of it saying it. But that is not the message. The message is going to be about something else. Um, but I am going to have to, you know, drop a little scripture on you. Hey, boo, thanks for jumping on. I hope you're having a wonderful Monday. Um, but yeah, y'all. I wrote it so that I stay focused. So I'm pretty much going to like let the vibes catch me how they catch me. Hey, Ike. Welcome, my brother. Thank you so much for jumping on. Um, I just want to talk about what me and God, you know, like what, what we discovered last night, what the Lord had me stumble upon um, last night. So that's what today is about. And if anybody has their Bible with them, once they jump on the live, I've missed this voice. Oh, thank you so much. My squeaky voice. To, people tell me I sound like Rosie Perez or like a uh, Fran off the nanny. So <laughs> anybody who likes my voice, I appreciate you. Um, but yeah, guys, if you have your Bible, please, you know, flip it open to, um, Ezekiel and we'll start at, let me, let me, let me stay focused. I'm gonna do it exactly how I have it. Please flip over to Ezekiel chapter three, verse, um, 14. That's where we're going. So let me back up. Cause like I told y'all, I had already made it to, um, chapter 14. I couldn't put it down. It was like a good read. You know, the Bible is, is jewels in that thing. It's life in there. It's, this is the bread of life. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. All right. So it states, <clears throat> moreover, he said to me, son of man, eat what you find. Eat this scroll like paper, eat the paper and go speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth and he caused me to eat the scroll. Okay. Now I have here written, most would like to look straight. Most would look straight over this scripture and this verse, but not when you seek God and ask for a rhema word. So I'm just reading the first chapter to show you guys. That's where I started. Like I asked God for a rhema word. I flipped open my Bible. God knows his daughter. So he knew by starting to read chapter 13, it would strike, you know, core to me. So it says, um, Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 14, it's right here in front of me, <laughs> states this. So the spirit lifted me up and took me away, and I went in bitterness, in the heat of my spirit. But the hand of the Lord was strong upon me. So I'm going to pause right there for a minute because already it's hard to miss up here in chapter 3. The first verse where it says Ezekiel was ordered by God to eat a scroll with God's word on it. Let me read it for you, which I already did. <laughs> he didn't want to deliver the message to the hand, to the hard-headed and hearted captives folks in Tel Aviv, which is a true thing. So pretty much everybody over there, the captives, were ruining Israel. They were performing an idol, uh, idolatry, um, abomination of the soul, adultery, everything you could think of sin-wise, right? And God was just tired of it. So he chose Ezekiel to go and speak the word to them 
to to hopefully cause them to you know have a shift in their atmosphere and their attitudes and begin to stop being what they called a rebellious house which was also paramount to me because that rang all through the 14 chapters that I've read thus far rebellious house rebellious house rebellious house rebellious house rebellious house and I just have been speaking against a rebellious home even in my own home so that was really dynamite to me as well so let me stay focused <clears throat> so he didn't want to deliver the message to the hard-headed and hard-hearted captives in Tel Aviv. But wow, this proves the same for each and every one of us today. We go do a thing God has called us to do, but we're with, with bitterness and dread, we do those things. But there's here's the revelation that I got last night. You ready? All right. It is that the flesh, that's the flesh, and your soul and spirit, are dying to do all that God has orchestrated for you in your life okay and through it and though it is tough the hand of the Lord hands both of them is upon your life and your situation now in chapter 3 verse in the first three verses it has already put out there in chapter 1 of Ezekiel it says like a plot, it, 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 it states the plot of the whole chapter that's coming up. And it states in the very first um, thing. Here, I'll just read it straight out my Bible. It says, the hand of the Lord was upon him there. So even in the city of Chaldeans, the hand of the Lord is upon him. He hasn't even been asked to do anything yet. And the hand of the Lord is on him. God knows what he's called you to do. The hand of the Lord is on you. Your life, your situation, your purpose, everything that he has born you to do, which I think was back in Jeremiah the other night, exactly, Jeremiah um, chapter 1, verse 5, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, before you were born, I sanctified you, meaning I covered all over you, I literally bore you for a purpose. God makes no mistakes. He doesn't just sit up there with idle hands and idle workshop time and just create beings with no purpose. So if you're that person today who needed the revelation that I needed, which was, I do have purpose. It doesn't matter that I get stuck in my flesh and I think I suck. It doesn't matter that in my flesh I think I'm not where I'm supposed to. I think I am, I should be farther than where I'm supposed to be because my timing is not God's timing. And on top of everything, there's been times that I have caused myself to not be where I'm supposed to be because I've been lazy, because I've been depressed, because I have had no motivation, I'm tired of all the no's I get, and I question God, and I question His purpose for my life. Honestly, this is like true transparency with you guys today. And that's why I know that God gave me Ezekiel, and why I'm going to be in here for days to come. And Lamentations means to weep. It's like sing, um, sorrow and tears. It's just like Lamentations. I had to Google that last night. I never knew that. Lamentations is a, is a gospel in the Bible. But Lamentations has its own meaning. And that was beautiful. So guys, when I say all this, I need all, like, all the way to chapter 11, when I kept reading, um, and on verse 19 in chapter 11, it states this. I'm never the same again after this. You ready? Then I will give them one heart. I will put a new spirit within him and take the stony one out. Ouch. Take the stony one out of their flesh and give them a, a heart of flesh. That they may walk in my statutes and keep my judgments and do them. They shall be my people. And I will be their God. You guys, I have chills right now again. I'm cheesy and all excited just like I was last night when I came across this. And you guys know me. I've done prison time. I've read my Bible left to right, front to back. Like The Bible never gets stale. The word never gets stale. There's always a fresh rhema word just waiting for the Lord to be able to speak to you through that, through that story, through that scripture, whatever, wherever you stumble. Okay? Their God, that I will be their God. Like, may we please just sit and ponder on that for a second? That means not only the day he made you and created you for a purpose and he said, I love you and this is my daughter, this is my son. But on top of it all, he considers us his people. 
I don't know if that hits you the way it hits me, but that makes me feel so special. I can't even put it into words. It's as bad as when I found the scripture about um, how he presses us but never crushes us. Like, I still get chills with that. I still get chills with that. You're always going to discover something new that you either missed over or in that time of life you weren't mature enough to receive it that way. So God will re-talk to you or, you know, talk to you for the first time through it. But like, Ezekiel was just a, 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 a gospel that I never really like entertained much. Like I read it, but you know, like I didn't get much insight except God don't play no games. That's what I took from Ezekiel a long time ago. And now God doesn't play any games because people keep playing with God. You guys force God. To not play games with you and deliver wrath. God's just up there chilling, minding his business, wanting everybody to comply and follow his, his statutes and his laws and his commandments. But you all choose differently. We, not you all like I'm judging somebody. We all choose differently. And then we have prices to pay. Or he's put a curse on the land or whatever. A famine's coming, whatever the case may be. But guys, we do that. Being hard-headed, being hard-hearted, being, hey, Rafiano, hi, 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 so nice to see you, jump on, God bless you today, um, but guys, we do that, there's so much drama in our lives that we cause, and when you try to turn around and blame God, or you're sad, or you're mad, or you're depressed about those situations, do you ever just come outside of yourself and chin check your own self and wonder how much of that you just embraced unknowingly and self-sabotaged on your own? Do you ever think about that? I'm talking about even when you have a project and you set yourself up for failure before you even start by telling yourself you can't do it. But God gave it to you. It's in you to do. So how dare us tell God, no, not me. And everybody in the Bible has been there. They all tell God what they're not called to do. I can't. I stutter. I can't. I used to be a whore. I can't. I, I'm an adulterer. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. And God's like, hello? You didn't make you. You have, we have, no right to tell God what we can and cannot do. We have no right to tell it to ourselves because we're ruining ourselves. You are your worst critic. If you tell yourself I can't, you can't. That's it. Remember my fortune cookie post? If you say you can't, that's it. You can't. If you say you can, you can. But if God puts something inside of you and it is burning and, and, and he's called you to do it and it makes you uncomfortable... It's going to grow you. It's going to make you better. And his hand is all over you to do that. He's giving you the covering. He's got the, the pathway straight open. You just got to figure out how to walk through it. And so many of us get lost on what's our purpose. How do we walk through it? Where are we going? What does he want me to do? And that's all on you guys. You have to seek God's face. You have to ask those things. You have to tap into yourself and see where you're strong and where you're weak at. And begin to attack those weak things about you and strengthen those because where you're strong at you don't really need to build up okay so let me finish reading this and try to stay focused um man they shall be my people and i will be their god he really does call us and consider us his people we are really his family his child his people his creations I'm so speechless in the Holy Spirit giving this to me and God making sure I flip open exactly to Ezekiel chapter 3 and reading backwards and then forwards um, that I like wanted to post to you guys at like 5 o'clock this morning because I think me and God were up at like 3 or 4 and I was up till 5 doing this like writing and journaling to make sure I stayed focused um, but I have to thank God for this amazing freeing word because at the end of the day guys we all are going through something in our homes. I don't care the most perfect home in the world and you guys eat dinner together every night. Somebody in that family has something they're going through, they struggle with. We need to know and understand that when we feel like everything is put together and so like hunky-dory, that we're probably living in a life of contentment and we're probably not actually where God wants us at. We are the expressions, image of God. We are Christ extending life. Exactly. Thank you, Ike. That's my point. We, if we don't tap into our callings and do the uncomfortable things like Ezekiel had to do and eat scrolls and go in front of a whole bunch of bad heathen people who didn't want to hear about God, 
then we're never going to shift. We're never going to cause a shift in this world. We're never going to be able to break any generational curses. We're never going to be able to walk out of trauma and into healing. And that was deep. I need to remember that. Hold on. See, guys, the Holy Spirit. Walk out of trauma and into healing. Then we can't make change. Then we can't make change. Then we can't... When, when we hear God's voice or when we're put in a situation and it's like, okay, go move, go do that, go talk to that person, go whatever. We won't be disciplined in the spirit to do that. And we're going to miss out on so many things. God tells him, and I'm not going to bore you guys because it's, it's a um, pretty long chapter. Ezekiel has 48 chapters in the Bible. But God tells him, if you don't, call, if you don't go tell them what I told you to tell them, I'm going to curse your hand. And you're going to die by their sword. Of all their wrongs, you're going to die for it too. I'm going to curse you in your name. Hi, family guy. Thank you for joining. I was just... Sharing a word today, Ezekiel hit me like a ton of bricks last night and I had to jump on here and talk about it. So that's where we're at. But guys, this was like, this was just major. This was just completely major in every way. Totally just lost my train of thought. Holy Spirit, bring it back to me. Because at the end of the day, Ezekiel didn't have to listen. That's it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Ezekiel didn't have to listen. But he knew that by not listening to the Lord and taking the chance to go and travel through the city and get to Israel, that if he didn't at least tell them the truth, that he was going to be held accountable just the same as everybody else who was doing wrong. And that is this day and age. We believers in Christ, uh, social evangelizers like I call myself, if we don't get on here and push the truth and try to help people catch their tails from total damnation, then we are holding ourselves accountable and we are God is holding us accountable and we are now responsible for those lives that we just came into contact with that we did not share the gospel with, that we did not tell the truth to. You are now responsible for that life. So if they turn around and decide to join Satan or whatever they do and you were given an opportunity to speak life into them but you didn't want to because you didn't want to be judged or ridiculed or whatever the case may be, you are now held in contempt of court, if you will, for that. So what Ezekiel did was say, uh-uh, God, I'm about to command you. I'm going to be disciplined. I'm going to go tell these people what it is. Do you know that by chapter 14, God was blessing Ezekiel with the whole entire country of Israel? It, it was his. He gave him all the land. Gave it to him. Because even though some listened and some didn't, he did what God asked him to do. Okay? So only 14 chapters in, and it's so overwhelming there's so many different messages from what God gave me last night um, that it's like overwhelming and that's why I jump on live because I never know how long the video is going to go when this happens to me because guys, there's nothing more dope than spending time in your word. I know you guys think I'm crazy, especially my new believers who like open the Bible and they're like thee, thou, thou, shall and you don't know what you're reading. But if you just ask for peace and understanding for the Holy Spirit to come and pretty much like sit next to you and read the Bible with you and help you, and Google's your best friend, you cannot go wrong. You will get so much revelation from the Word because it is our bread of life. It is our bread and our water. You're supposed to have 80% water, 20% solid, but in the bread of life, God says you can maintain right here. Fruits and veggies in the Word some water okay sorry guys I'm itching I put my rose water on today <laughs> got me a little dry under there all right so the other thing I want to point out is 6 14 I left on chapter 14 okay by the time I got to chapter 13 the end of chapter 13 you can check it out in your Bible for yourself it says my people um, I will deliver my people out of your hand and you shall know that I am the Lord that was the 15th time by chapter 14, by chapter the end of chapter 13. That was the 15th time that God has Ezekiel say, and God says himself, they need to know, my people need to know, I'm their Lord. My people need to know. So when people are jumping on here and like, hey, you know, God said my, to my people, they know their Bible. 
My people is what he calls us to the ones that choose to be his people. To the ones that choose to be his people and lift up the cross with Jesus Christ who died for our sins. Those are the ones he's talking to. If he doesn't want to get anything else clear to any anybody who picks up the Bible, it is that he is the Lord. He's your Lord. I am the Lord. Four words. And it is repeated in this Bible in almost every chapter obsessively. Because God is a true believer in repetitiveness to try to get you to receive a word inside your spirit and your flesh. Your soul don't need it. It's your spirit and your flesh. Your soul, oh man, your soul's just in there waiting for you to catch up. It knows where its original home is. It knows none of this stuff matters. We're not going to remember any of it. All the beef and stuff we got going on in our lives right now. Do you understand there's going to come a day? Like when you die, especially from the testimonies I see, you're right there. There is no if, ands, buts. There's no second. It is a blink of an eye. You're already in heaven. And you don't remember your mom. You don't remember your dad. You don't remember your kids. And it is the most overwhelming amount of love that you feel that you don't even desire to ever want to come back here to the earth in the first place. So we're all here tripping over our own feet for a purpose, purposes that only should be giving God glory in his kingdom because that's where we are to reunite. That's where we're to go back to. So like working towards getting brand new cars and God doesn't even like money. If you really get in your Bible, God never created money. He wanted the barter system in place. Man made money. God said he will give you the desires of your heart and the riches of your heart in heaven. He's just doing that like temporarily almost like to make you feel good and, you know, give you a little fleshly stuff here and satisfaction. But God is not impressed with your house. He's not impressed with your clothes, your Louis Vuitton, your stuff. Name brands I don't even know about because it's not who I am. All the stuff that you go to work for every single day, even down to paying your bills. God is not impressed that you go to work more on paying your bills and you're focused more on that money than spending time with him. Because little do you understand, if you spent more time with the Lord, he would free up your time at whatever job you're at and he would make your finances take off. Take off. But you, ye of little faith, you, ye of letting uh, money rule you. That's scripture. Money is the root of all evil. No. You make money the root of all evil. Money is not the root of all evil. And a lot of people in this world know how to control their money and still live functioning lives and rock for Christ and tithe and save and fruit give and all that. So we can't even say that. But you guys need to know that God is just like, okay, here, have that land. That's fine. But that stuff's not important to him. That's not what he wants you chasing. And he doesn't want you running from a calling. I don't care how uncomfortable we are. We have to keep at it. We have to keep at it. Guys, I'm never going to be the same again. He says my people over and over again. My people. My people. Five times. Six times. Seven times. My people. My people. My people. My people. In Ezekiel. If that doesn't make you feel good, if you're a person who dealt with rejection and abandonment and abuse in your lifetime and you never feel accepted and you never truly feel loved, hearing this, stumbling upon this in the Bible, my people, my hand is on them, makes me feel some security that no man could ever give me. Ever. Not even my best friend. I love her to pieces. She could not give me the security ever in life that just stumbling across these scriptures gave to me last night. Because I am her. I am you. I am so nervous for my future. And I shouldn't be because my face should be way bigger. And some days it's not. Some days all I do is look in the flesh and see where I'm not at. And I feel discouraged. And I know that's the same for you too. So when you come upon videos like this and I'm suggesting to you to get an Ezekiel and let the word speak to you on your own, I mean that. I mean that. People can preach their hearts off, preach out their shoes, and preach till there's no more sweat rags left to wipe their foreheads. But at the end of the day, until you receive your own revelation about the word and you let it marinate in your own spirit, it cannot do for you what it did for me. You cannot receive the goosebumps and the hair standing up all over your arms the same way that I did because you're not going and delving into it for yourself, seeing what God may speak to you about. And then, like I told you guys, I'm dealing with some stuff in the house again. Rebellious house. I have been praying against all rebellious homes in the whole entire nation. But I'm really, really, really praying for mine too because 
I don't want rebellious anything. I want everything good. I want good vibes all the time. I, I don't like Discord. I don't. Ever since I was a little girl, like, if I had to people please my life away to keep everything good and good vibes, that was me. Okay? So now that I'm dealing with the rebellious home in a different way and different ways, um, you know, like, uh, from the children, right? Or even rebellious with these squirrels. I'm literally praying over the squirrels to not raid my turtles home every day. But you can't join. <laughs> join. I'm reading my thing says join. But yeah, we can use join. You can't join in those festivities. Those, that's miserable life for those people. They want that, let them have that. You can't join in with that. You got to stay focused with your faith. You have to stay focused on what you know God has for you. You can't get caught up in someone else's walk because you can't walk for them. There go my boo. What's up, Tisha? What's up, Tisha? All right. So with that being said, just please. Get into Ezekiel yourself and really, really, really figure out what it is Danielle is up here talking about today. Because being up with the Lord at 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning to some is like, I gotta go to work. That's fine. Find your own time. I'm just telling you guys, he be talking to me like crazy at 3, 4 in the morning. 2 in the morning. Um, and if you look up spiritually, like that is literally God's time to talk the most. I think they say between like 2 and 6 are like whoo, peak hours for the Lord. 3 a.m. specifically, but it's just something about when everything is still and the world has calmed down and the average, you know, average people are like sleep. That you have to find your own life and your own line with God. You have to. If you don't have your own, like my kids, I tell them all the time since they were little, I'm going to die one day. You can't be worried about our relationship more than you're worried for the Lord's relationship and your own personal relationship because you're going to need him more than you can ever need mommy. Your facial expressions got me laughing. Yeah, I get told that quite often, Ike. <laughs> Especially now that I picked up all this weight. I got all these chins now. I'll be looking extra funny. But for real, guys, even us as an adult, we had one type of relationship with the Lord when we were little. We require and need different things when we get older. Therefore, our relationship that was established with the Lord when we were little kids, it, it's gone. It dissipates. It's like... Please let my dad hit the lotto so we can have a bigger house. Please let my mom, I don't know, not drink. Whatever your prayers were when you were little. They change when we get older. Now we're praying for jobs and homes and cars and children and whatever the case may be. That means your relationship has to change. That means your faith in God and your will to do his will has to change. It has to. It has to. You can't be an adult with a kid brain. <laughs> you can't. It's impossible. Um, so when I say that, I'm like, we walk out of trauma and into healing. We're walking out of trauma and we're embracing that healing for ourselves because we know without any release of bad on us, we're not going to want to hear what God has to say to us. We're not going to want to go towards a calling and our true purpose in life if we don't believe in ourselves, guys. And so much of that and so many of us is because we deal in a life of trauma. We deal out of a life of trauma. So we have to get healed so that when God comes and he's like, yeah, no, build that boat. We're not like, nah, it ain't never rain. I'm not building no boat. What you mean the whole world about to be wiped out and I'm going to be the only one saved? What? But God told him, if you follow my ways and you do exactly like I'm instructing you to do, I got you and your family. I'm going to take care of all my animals because you, I need you, but... I got you and your family. And he did the same thing to Ezekiel. He told him, man, if you go deliver this word, it don't even matter if they don't listen to you, okay? I'm going to bless you back. But if I give you the truth and I make you eat it, and I tell you to go to this village and you don't tell them the truth, you are now held by the exact same sword and the wrath that I'm going to throw on those people because you had the truth inside of you and you told no one. So, if we have the truth inside of us and we tell no one, I think that's why I always joke with you guys. If it's in my pores and it's starting to pour out, I have to hit record. I have to. I feel like I will throw up if I don't get on here and like record myself telling whoever will listen about God. Hi, my lovely thing. My angel. Hello, my love. Um, just getting on here shouting about the good time me and God had at 3 o'clock this morning in Ezekiel. <laughs> You know, I love bragging on my dad. And the, the message is just so monumental. I don't even do lives at, on Monday. And you, you all who are on here with me, you're usually with me on Thursday Live at 5. So you guys know how bizarre this is for me to even be on here today. But 
once I got my turtle straight and I got myself together for the day, I was just like, I have to hit record. I wanted to hit record at 5 o'clock this morning, like I said. I wanted to tell you guys about my people discovery so bad that, like, I was like, who in the world would jump on live right now and be with me? <laughs> who would jump on live and be with me right now? People are asleep. Hey, my bestie. Hello, my gorgeous angel. I'm so glad to see you stop by. Um, so guys, that's what I mean. Even that, like, uh, people that we've met here on live with each other and online, like, if you didn't listen to the purpose, to the calling that you had on your life that day when you talked to that certain person, and that nudge to be in that vicinity, talk to that person, whatever, whatever, then you would have missed that as well. You would have, we would have missed each other if we all were not disciplined to be right here today. Okay, so it's the same thing. If Ezekiel at any point would have decided to buck on God and everything that God told him, I'm, how about stop and just feel special that you got called to give a message in the first place? How about that part? How about that part? So he was scared. He was like, oh, my God, I just want to people, please. I do not want to show up and tell these people anything. You know, like they're bad. <laughs> they're bad. God. They're hard headed. I don't want to go. But God was like, look, if you don't go. I'm going to hold you accountable with that same sword that I'm about to serve them their can of whoop butt on. So I need you to just listen. And you don't even know how bad, how good I'm going to reward you after. And like I told you guys, I'm on chapter 14. And already God has handed Ezekiel the land for listening, for being disciplined. Okay? So there's not one person in the Bible that you're going to be able to bring to me and tell me they don't want to do what God called them to do at first. There's not one person. I, I know all the stories. Nobody wanted to do what God called them to do. Everybody deals out of their flesh. Everybody sees what they see and believes what they believe. And if you're not where you think you're supposed to be at, then you don't view God's calling on your life the same way. When you're living in so much sadness and trauma and hurt and resentment and coldness and blah, 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 it's so, so very hard to tap into what God has for you or to even want to hear from him because you don't feel worthy. You don't feel worthy. And yes, I do, my love, just like you know mine. Such an angel here on earth. Oh my God, I love you. So guys, if that's the case, we got to tap into our worth, right? Duh. And even when we tap into our worth and we feel absolutely confident and we are just like glowing in life, there's still going to be those times where God's going to ask you to do something and you're going to be like, no, for real. Me? Really? Uh, I don't know. And that's okay. It's the flesh. But it can't be, like, uh, profusely. It can't be in depth of just, no, there's just no way. It's me. And, like, you can't do that to yourself. You can't do that to God. Because, like I told you guys back here in Jeremiah, chapter 1, verse 5, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. That is literally being called for a purpose. He doesn't do idol workshop up there. Everything about you, there's no mistake. Everything. Everything about you. Even things you have no idea are coming about. It's still not a mistake. God didn't mess up. He didn't like, achoo sneeze and say, oh shoot, I got a keeper now. No, guys. He sat there and handcrafted each and every one of us. He pressed us, but he never crushed us. He gently and delicately handles and deals with us daily okay so please go find all the revelation that god wants to bestow upon your lives when it comes to ezekiel down to the rebellious house if any of you have rebellious children going on right now or just rebellious times in your life and you can just see the spiritual warfare alive in your life i'm asking you to just learn to speak against it <clears throat> Oh, let me see what my beautiful lady said. One thing I learned about God, you must fulfill what he has put in you. No one leaves this earth before it's time. Yes. 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 Before it's time, literally. Meaning like, even if you are sinning back to back to back to back to back, and God's like, okay, that's a beautiful soul right there. I don't want you to just rot in hell and be eternally damned. He's going to snatch you up. That means that was your time. That's it. He can't take no more. You're being too hard-headed, whatever the case may be. But that in itself is what we're, we're all trying to receive in our hearts, in our flesh. You're not here to be wasted. You are not an accident. You are not a mistake. God did not 
bore you to pick on you and tease you for a life that he doesn't plan to give to you. God doesn't play. He doesn't. As we're learning here in Ezekiel and all throughout the Bible, if you're hard-headed, you're, that wrath is coming, guys. It is because he's our dad. He has to chastise. He has to. But he does not condemn. He does not condemn. It's on you. As it was on Ezekiel. He told him, hey, here's your two options. But Ezekiel said, let me go ahead and be disciplined. I'm not playing around with God. Uh-uh. I'm not playing. Okay? So if we tap into our worth, and we receive in chapter 3, verse 14, that God's hand is on us. Then we can go through life knowing confidently, without a shadow of a doubt, that God's hand is on us. He is our Lord. He is, what does he say? We are his people and he's our God. We belong to each other. We belong to each other. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We belong to each other, guys. Even us now as friends, we're brother and sister one day. If God can't be put in that bracket, up on that highest pedestal that you could possibly find, to embrace that we are his people and to embrace even a, a portion of the love he has for you, we're never going to accomplish right much of anything, guys. We, we're, we're pretty much like wasting God's time. Can't even say your own. It's God's. Because you're not here for yourself. Okay? So, the only way to do that is to get disciplined. The only way to do that is to want to be better. The only way to do that is to have this desire just burning inside of you that's like, I don't want to do anything but your will, Lord. I just, I just want to fulfill your purpose. I don't want to do anything else in this world but serve you and be here for whatever you may call me to do. Every day I'm asking God, what's my mission? What's up? Whose shift am I making today? Who are you sending my way? What's up? Because he knows this daughter right here is so eager to share his word. We don't have much longer. And then much longer could be 100 more years. I'm just telling you. We don't have much longer in the spirit realm to catch these souls before these microchips and things like that start coming. And I can't even access the internet anymore. Like, let's talk about that. When the microchip comes, the mark of the beast comes for us, and they try to get the world order under world order, every single person knows, a true believer, you can't get into hell. It's like the mark that just stops right there at the pearly gates. You can't get there, guys. You can't come back from the chip. So with that being said, everybody who's a true believer and a true social evangelizer and, a, and a, just a... a, a, a servant for the Lord, we know that our time is limited where we get to pass his message on, where we get to educate people that even want to hear about God, because let's, let's not pretend like they're not trying to remove him and Jesus right on up out of here. Okay, so I get chills inside and outside just talking about that. It is a scary time, but once again, like my lovely lady says, you're not going to leave this earth before it's your time. So whoever you're meant to evangelize to, whoever you're meant to share that testimony with, whoever you're meant to share that story with, it'll get told. You, you're going to do your thing. You'll, you'll, you will have your time to shine. But it's got to be for God. It can't be for you. You can't be like serving God because you can't wait for him to give you a Ferrari and stuff like that. Like God doesn't operate like that. Plus, he knows your true intentions. So if you are doing that and you are trying to use or play God, you're not going to get anywhere. It's like a waste of time. Okay, so... I got to get my butt to the grocery store and cook some chicken stew tonight, pond request. Um, if you have any prayer requests that you would like to drop down below or anything that you want to just, you know, hash on, rehash on um, that we've spoken on today, like, please feel free. I love it and I embrace it. Um, and if not, I will pray us up out of here and let you guys go. I hope that this just blessed you profusely. Um, I'm going to finish tonight. I can tell you that. From chapter 14 to 48, it's going to be done tonight because I didn't want to put my Bible down. You talk about like a um, James Patterson or Danielle Steele type of book. It was one of those vibes of like, wow, the Bible is actually a really good read. It's the bread of life and it's for us, but it's just amazing. Okay, hold on one second. We got Sarah. CNN had a headline about Chip. Got something we'll text you about. I got for the broken heart in a book you must read. Okay. 
you are like my spiritual guru. You are everything that the Lord has for you to be in my life. So whatever you tell me to do or read, you know I'm going to do it. <laughs> a lot of people know our testimony, some don't, but my lovely lady, Miss Sarah is right here online and we met through a Walmart delivery, okay? So when I say you are where you're supposed to be and you, what if I would have called out of work that day? I wouldn't have got to meet her. I would have cheated my life from all that I have already thus far benefited from her being in my life and feeding into my life and still to come. I would have missed that. What if I would have been stank when I seen Ike's message come up on my DM and think he was just a guy trying to talk to me? I've been blessing that orphanage and everything and helping. And me and Ike have a whole friendship now and a brother sisterhood in Christ where we're probably going to make music together one day. But if I hadn't have been disciplined and listened to my spirit or my discernment, I wouldn't have that. My girl Tisha on here, like we've been riders for two years now on here. Um, and she's like, we got each other's personal number. Like that's actually my friend. And I would have missed out on a beautiful sisterhood and a friendship if I wouldn't have been disciplined in that way as well. So, please don't ever think that God makes any mistakes. Please don't think that you're a mistake. Please don't go against the grain of what God has called a purpose in your life. Purposes. Because you're making it look like God's made a mistake. You're making it look like God's wrong. <coughs> and God's never done anything wrong. He can't even lie. He's perfect. He's perfect. So if he's perfect... And he created you in his image. No, you're not perfect. But you are obviously called to do something magnificent if you're here. Okay? So, it's time to tap into that. I hope that this word just took over in your spirit. And really will cause a shift in your life after today. After tonight. After you... Open your Bible and you read Ezekiel for yourself. I really, truly, truly hope and pray that it does everything that I know the Lord has called me to cause to happen by bringing this up. Okay? He's our God. We are his people. He is our God. We are his people. It doesn't get much more realer than that. Knowing that God's hand is literally on you every second of the day, unless you have literally forced it off there. It's just monumental. It gives me a feeling of safety that I can never put into Webster's Dictionary and Thesaurus could offer me any, any word. And it wouldn't touch on it. It wouldn't touch on it. All right, we got Miss Sarah. She says, I'm in the Zoom meetings that humanitarian cries are never ending. I grieve for people, for the people. It's my calling. Me too. You know how kindred spirits we are like that. Oh my God. I always tell God, do you sure you don't need me to help you save the world? Because I'm, I'm totally down. <laughs> and Thurman, thank you so much for jumping on, boo. It's so good to see you. Um, we are closing out. This was such a fun time with you guys here um, Monday, you know. Because usually we're here Thursday Live at 5, which I hope you come back for. This doesn't um, take over my Thursday Live at 5. I just had such a monumental word from the Lord at 3 o'clock this morning that I had to get on here and share today. I just like, I had to. I had to. I felt like Ezekiel, like, Daniel, if you don't wake up and tell the people, something might happen, girl. Hi, I cannot pronounce your tag, but thank you so much for jumping on. I appreciate you stopping by. We are about to close out. I just want to pray for the power of protection to touch each and every one of you all. I want to pray for the power of the Lord's covenant to stay all up on you, covering you and your circle and your enemies. And everything about your life needs to take off in a way that you've never seen before with the power of your faith, with the power of your healing. Remember, we are learning to walk out of trauma and into healing. Out of trauma and into healing. Out of trauma and into healing. Because if we can do that and we can water our temple while keeping life simple, then God can begin to give you your purpose. There's a lot of us out here that he can't give us our purpose and talk to us about our calling because we ain't trying to hear it. Or we don't even believe in ourselves. We don't believe in God. He can't talk to you like that, y'all. You got to get rid of these cold-hearted people, uh, this cold-hearted ways that we were talking about with the people in Tel Aviv. Um, all of the captives. You can't be like that. You can't be like that. Text me when you are on. I'm in a meeting. Maybe can I get on? Okay. I will put a reminder in my phone and text you at like 3.30, 4 o'clock on Thursdays from here on out to remind you for Thursday Live at 5. That's a deal. That's definitely a deal. All right. 
Lord God, thank you so much. Thank you so much for using me as your demonstrator, as your mouthpiece. Thank you for always decreasing me and increasing you, Lord God. That is the main goal there. I don't want to be in my flesh, Lord God, because then I won't even get on here and hit record. If I worry about what people think and say about me, Lord God, I would never, ever, 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 ever have met all the beautiful, awesome children that you have created in this world. I thank you, Lord God, for every single soul that you have brought my way. Whether it be that we still talk or that I just gave them a rhema word for the day. I thank you, Lord. I thank you that I know that what I'm doing does help and it does cause a shift in your atmosphere for your kingdom's sake. For your glory, Lord God. For that is the only reason we were born here. I thank you, Lord God, that this is not our real home. I thank you, Lord God, that our original home is heaven because I couldn't imagine staying here much longer. Lord God, I thank you for each and every person's calling that you have put into their life, Lord God. And I know confidently that this video will cause a shift. Will cause a shift in the purpose and the feeling that these folks, your people, get when they think about you, Lord God. When they think about anything that they could possibly do to just make you happy and make you proud, Lord God. Aside from following them Ten Commandments. So, Lord God, we thank you. We praise you. I ask that you keep everybody safe, Lord God, and just warm up their hearts this week, Lord. Warm up their hearts just a little bit. Remind them that your hands <laughs> never leave them unless they cause them to go. You don't leave us, Lord. You just don't leave us. Help us find our worth, Lord God. Help us release all sadness and abandonment and rejection, all past trauma that keeps us from who we are in your name. In your image, Lord, I rebuke it and I put it down to the pits of hell, Lord God, where it belongs. For we are your children and we are called for greatness. I ask that you help us walk in it. In Jesus' name we pray. We love you so much. Amen. Okay, guys. Got info on Daniel's prophecies. Ooh. Cool. Okay. We definitely got to talk. The only thing I have to do tonight is cook dinner. I'm going to the grocery store right now. So if you even want to call me, you can do that. Um, but if not, please text me the book and such. And I'm going to put that reminder on my phone. So guys, I hope that prayer blessed you. I hope the word blessed you. I am so appreciative of all of you. You truly are my friends. And um, that just makes me feel like I can't even describe it. Like it's such a blessing. You're, you're, you're lucky to leave with one. Let alone three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so... Um, Beautiful Sarah, thank you so much. You are truly an angel here on earth. I cannot wait to continue to have a front row seat in what God is doing in your life and what he's going to cause to happen in you and I's life to do together. I can already like feel it since I met you. And I'm just so excited for that. Um, Thurman, if you're still on here, you know you're my whole dude. Like We are going to meet. We are too close in vicinity of each other to not meet. Ike, you are such a special guy. I cannot wait for the Lord to enlarge my territory so I can continue to help as much as I possibly can over there. But I have a feeling that God's going to enlarge your territory so that you can cause that first shift over there in Igunda. And if not, we're going to do it together. And if not, we're going to do it together. But I have a very, very, very strong feeling that God has something inside of you, Ike, that you haven't even begun to tap into. Okay? In his time, but sooner than you think. Exactly. So guys, I lift my own self up in prayer today. Before I exit out real quick, I've been very discouraged about the business. I've been very uh, depressed within my own self on trying to find my purpose and thinking that things don't go fast enough. So maybe I'm supposed to go over here and do this now and really learning to just sit still in the rosemary oil and the rose water um, lately. I just wanted to ask my people to pray for me um, because I didn't see any prayers go down there in the comment section. And, you know, you don't want to expose your business. DM me anytime. You know I got you. But I want to expose myself before I click off the live and just say, lift your sister up in prayer. Help me remind myself to keep my own faith and to know that God has his own timing. And what looks slow to us is just moving at very regular positive speed with the Lord. <laughs> it's us that gets in the way. It's us that causes our flesh to, oh my God, just, you, you just get negative for no reason. It's like negative Nancy. Like you just let Satan just come sit up here on your shoulder and he just starts talking to you and you just, oh my gosh, before you know it, at the end of the day, you're just like, <laughs> so I don't 
want to be like that. And I love you guys so much. You guys pray for me as much as I pray for you. So I'm just putting full transparency out there right now and letting my people know I have not been in the greatest spirits. Um, you know, the joy of the Lord has been given to me. I can't take that and remove that from myself every day. But deep, deep, deep inside, I have had this new darkness try to sit with me and ride in the car with me and get in the shower with me. <laughs> And it doesn't want to shake off me. And I just wanted to see if my people would be willing to pray for me this time in a different way that can help cause a shift in my life. Because they say, when two or more agree, it shall be. And I am just letting you guys know that I am not in the best of spirits. And I think that's a big reason why God gave me Ezekiel last night, you know, because... <sighs> We don't need to see what he's got in store for us, to be honest. <laughs> we don't. We just need to go with the flow and be disciplined and just live for him every day. And some days, it's hard. And I don't ever like to get on here and pretend like it's not. I don't ever like to pretend like I didn't struggle with something you're going through right now or I'm not struggling today. So please, if you can just lift me up in prayer. I cannot pronounce the name of the person that jumped on, but I see homie style something. Thank you for stopping by. Um, please catch the replay. I always end up reposting my lives. Um, I'm just the girl who loves Jesus. <laughs> I'm just the girl who loves Jesus. I'm just the girl who just cannot live without talking about God. I can't live without sharing how amazing he is to the masses and how he gets me through my ruts like I'm talking about right now and how he just never fails me. Um, but yeah, guys, we all go through those dark places and I'm there. Uh, and I look at me, I'm still jumping on here trying to make sure we're all good, you know, but I never thought I'd be making product and now I'm making it and it's blessing the lives who have dare to try it and then there's so many that aren't willing to try it and I know that's just you know not meant to use my product that's fine um but the business takes so much money and time out of myself and to not you know to still be a red zone almost two years later it's just kind of like uh-oh what have I done uh-oh what have I done so help me help you <laughs> excuse me and help me in the spirit realm Tap into my purpose and believe it. Help me and lift me up in the spirit to believe that I'm worth something too. And that I'm worth greatness. And that I deserve good things to come my way. Because to me, you live a life so long of being told that you're not anything, that you never will be. That you get older and you have to develop and adapt a whole new way of thinking. And begin to talk yourself out of everything that was put into you by others and that sucks tell me about product first for me okay so yeah um i've been posting reels uh like crazy and videos um my flyers and stuff for the rose water and the rosemary oil um there's a miracle in every single petal it's 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 amazing i haven't bought windex in over a year um psoriasis eczema being treated and cured hair growing from alopecia and um, bald spots and cracked skin and bug bites. Like, it's it's been amazing. It's I, I don't know what to say. Genesis 128 teaches us. He left everything here for us to consume and figure it out so we can consume it and, and be healthy and not, you know, have man-made stuff. And I, I did it. <laughs> I did it. I discovered it. Um, but yeah, now it's just a matter of getting it out to the masses. I've got a couple ambassadors that, you know, go to bat for me in the streets and they have my product for me. So it is taking off. I am just an instant gratification type of person. And when I don't see things moving fast, my dad knows me. I get sad. I get sad. <laughs> Sarah said I'm in. Yeah, mama, please. Um, we need to see each other anyway, but I will definitely bring you some samples. Um, it's just two products. It's the rose water and the rosemary oil and it's changing lives um, But it's taking a while to change lives and it's taking a while for people to be convinced of how awesome and amazing it is And how they can't believe they would only need two products in their house to take care of everything You can drink the rose water you can, My catchphrase is what else do you know you can uh, <laughs> Drink and clean your kitchen sink with that's my little slogan so How dare I act like two years is long? 
I'm a whole apothecary chick now. I'm holistic as all get out. I don't believe in medicines and stuff. So this has just been nothing but God that he would use me as the vessel and the chemist in there concocting things and, and making it to where this world just understands how much that half of what's in their garden and in their yard could be treating things in their households and causing no chemicals and no alcohols and no things of that nature being used in their home for their children to be breathing in and just so beneficial just absolutely so beneficial um sarah if you've been doing zoom calls it sounds like you and i need to get on one if not we definitely need to schedule a time to see one another definitely come to my house face to make incense and oils herbalist chick see see <laughs> now you feel it now you feel it hi best well, I'm glad you joined, Mama, but we're leaving. I keep running my mouth out and prayed us out of here twice, I think. Um, but yeah, beautiful angel on earth. We will definitely talk about more than one thing, obviously. Um, I am so uh, fascinated to know that you were doing that because I didn't know that. So that's awesome in itself. Um, but yeah, guys, pretty much both. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Aye, aye, Captain. <laughs> But yeah, guys, pretty much that is just what it is. Please, 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 if you are just stopping by, catch the replay. Best, I already know you will get it when you get it. But anybody else, please know my live is not just my live. This will be reposted in just a moment. If you've got any, any, any prayer requests for me, please, please, please DM me. It doesn't have to be in front of the world. I promise you all, I take your prayers straight to that prayer closet, my lake, my 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 cemetery, and I go to war for you all. So, with that being said, I can't do anything but bring this word, <laughs> this bread of life. I can't do nothing but bring it to you. Bring it to you, bring it to you, bring it to you. And I need to ponder on it some more tonight. In a way that I know that God didn't make a mistake with me too, guys. That's why I say I jump on here to help, but it's for me too. <laughs> my worth is questionable on most days. And I've been so abused my whole life that a lot of days I don't think I deserve anything good. Which, why? They did that to me. I didn't do that. So, if I didn't get anything else across to you today, it is that you are not a mistake. It is that you have so much purpose in this world that God hasn't even begun to be able to show you because... You might not be in a good headspace where you're, you're willing and ready to receive it. You might not think you're so awesome, but you are. You might think you were a mistake or even been raised and one of your parents used to tell you that. Let their words go straight down to the pits of hell and let them burn for all eternity. You're not a mistake. You're not. You're not an accident. If your mama told you, oh, I never wanted to have you, you just, I looked up and was pregnant. Whatever somebody didn't said to you. Oh, well. They're not even really your parents. You're not even really their kid. Let that confuse you. You're God's child. We are his people, and he's our God, but you're actually really God's daughter or son. Okay? So, please pay this forward. Know how much I love you guys. Know how much I receive in the spirit that you guys are going to be praying for me tonight with my little depression and my little dark spot that I'm going through right now. And know that when you come to, to Simone's Inspirations page, we're not on here judging each other and striving for any bit of perfection. We're just striving to be as close to excellency because that's where God remains. <laughs> that's where he's going to always be. Okay? So, please don't get on here and feel pressure. Like, if you jump on my page and you think I'm more farther out than you or somebody comes on here and leaves a comment of something they do, like, don't be intimidated by that. It's time for you to tap in and figure out what it is that you got going on so that you can add to this world and be awesome. And be awesome. And believe in yourselves. Okay, guys? So, we're going to cast down the flesh. Bye-bye. Pits of hell. See you later. And we're going to embrace our beautiful souls and our beautiful spirits and find out what it is that God has called us to do. Period, point blank. Period, point blank. Remember what I said. We're walking out of trauma and we're walking into healing. Out of trauma, into healing. And with that being said, I love you guys so, so much. Agape love. Besos to all, and lovely lady, I will talk to you soon. Later, best. Later, Ike, whoever's still on here. Holla, holla. <clears throat>